Well, I was not going to talk about the Trayvon Martin case. Everyone else is talking about it, and as long as I've been hearing about it, my primary reaction has been that this is, however interesting a case, this is a local case. This is a case about whether someone committed uh, justifiable self-defense or if they committed some degree of manslaughter and or murder. And the question of which of the two possibilities it is, whether it's justifiable or not, is based on, you know, the facts of the case. Which, I have to be perfectly honest, as much as I've read and as much as I've watched, I don't know what the facts of the case are. And neither do most of the other people commenting. And so, uh, to me, this is, for some reason, been blown all way, way out of proportion. This should not be national news. Whenever I see this on national news, I wonder to myself, could there not be something more important that they're not talking about? And why is it that there's so much emphasis on this? And although the case itself I don't think has national significance, there are several aspects of its effect on popular culture that are more general and worth noting, um, which is the only reason I'm going to make this video. But there's one in particular. I mean, there's a couple things you could do. The, bizarre degree of race baiting. Um, Zimmerman is not white. He is not a white European American. All right, whatever you want to say, that's not what he is. And it is very interesting how the how it developed. I, I just watched a timeline of the reporting on the incident, how uh, very early on some sources called him white. Uh, he was widely reported as white. And then when it became widely known, pictures of him circulated that he's not white, he's what is generally called Hispanic, although Hispanic is itself a more or less made up. Um, it's, not, it's not a race or an ethnicity, it's just something that people make up. Um, at least to me, anyway. Uh, then all of a sudden he became a white Hispanic, which is not a group that I've ever seen referenced before. I've never seen a sheet of you know, where you have to indicate your race and it says Hispanic, white, and then white Hispanic is one of the options. If you marked them both, you probably, you know, they'd send it back and say you gotta, gotta correct that. So, that was just a, a clear case of we want to maintain the, the race narrative. Since he's not white, we're just gonna say what he is with white in front of it. Um, which I thought that's very interesting. But, you know, what really, what I really find the most pertinent about this is the selective rage of the fucking liberals. All right, people posting on Facebook, people posting online, the videos I see, oh, he died, he died. And let's just assume, for the sake of argument, that the court got it wrong, and that it was an unjustifiable homicide, and maybe even a malicious one, you know? There's no evidence for that, but let's, let's just say Zimmerman is just a, a bad apple. He, he went out looking for trouble. He was trigger happy, and he killed this guy, this kid. Uh, there's no evidence that that's the case, but, you know, for the sake of argument, let's say that that's what is what happened. All right, so, great, then this is a tragedy. It's one person who's been murdered. That's pretty bad. I mean, that's, that's fucked up for the family. That's pretty terrible. But what about all the innocent children that Barack Obama murders with drones every day or on a weekly basis? What about all the people he tortures in Guantanamo Bay? You know, what about the NSA spying on all Americans? You know, George Zimmerman's a narc because he goes and follows around somebody walking around in his neighborhood. Uh, how about the people who record everything? You know, have, is that not some matter of orders of magnitude more outrageous than the private crimes of this one guy? Let's assume that they are crimes and not justifiable self-defense, which, as far as I can tell, all the evidence seems to point towards. But again, I'll grant, maybe I'm wrong, and I and I could be wrong because I wasn't there. You know, let's say he, he, he did commit a, a, a heinous manslaughter, second-degree murder, just a, an unjustifiable homicide, let's just say that. Barack Obama is committing unjustifiable homicides on the orders of dozens, hundreds, thousands. And when you confront liberals about this, their only reaction is to say, Bush would have been worse, or Romney would have been worse, or McCain would have been worse. And I agree with all of that. However, that does not then make his actions anything less reprehensible than they are. This would be like me going, 
beating the crap out of a black person, raping them, robbing them, and then saying everything is fine because at least I'm not as bad as George Zimmerman. At least I didn't kill them. Would anyone find that to be a persuasive argument to my morality or th that I should not be uh, indicted, at least at the very least in public opinion? You know, because George Zimmerman killed a black person whereas I just, you know, raped and robbed and, and beat one, assaulted? No. Yet, this is considered like a definitive proof that Obama is acceptable, that he's a good guy, he's a righteous individual, and the people I see crying with their fucking bullshit tears about Trayvon Martin dying, but who will never, ever in their entire lives since Barack Obama's been elected, post one thing about the victims of his heinous activity who drowned all the blood of all the Trayvon Martins that have been killed in the last eight years. You might say in the last, you know, if you want to draw out the scale, say black Americans have suffered a lot more over 400 years, fine, because it's been 400 years, but whatever. Not in the last eight, though. You know, how many little Abdullahs and Mohammeds and Hakims, how many of them need to die? How many people in Syria, you know, how many... How many people need to be decapitated by Al-Qaeda in Syria, um, you know, after they take a town with arms that we've given them, directly or indirectly? And we're not the main people arming the Syrian rebels, not yet. All that seems to be where we're going, but we're, we're helping them. You know, wh where's the outrage in that? Where's the outrage in the drone strikes? And Edward Snowden, you know, this guy who he went out and uh, did all of us a great service, did the world a service, a great humanitarian, who sacrificed so much and he's being persecuted relentlessly and yet the problem that most people have is that one person isn't being persecuted enough and that one person even if he's guilty of the accusations laid against him which again the evidence seems to suggest otherwise but I could be wrong it would be nothing compared to the criminality of the government or the personal uh, you know I mean, the government's a big thing, and I'm not one to just say, okay, I'm going to blame the ex chief executive for every single thing that the government does to anybody all the time, because he doesn't know. He doesn't know about the guy who's giving you a parking ticket, who's roughing people up, or is roughing up African Americans every day of the year because of the drug war. I mean, he knows that's going on, he endorses it, but he doesn't have specific knowledge of all of that. I mean, people think that he loves you. He doesn't know who the fuck you are. He just knows that whatever the government does to you is justified. Anything that it does to you, he agrees with. And it does a lot of fucked up shit to a lot of people every day. And nothing that one person on their own can accomplish even comes close to that. Uh, but, you know, Obama, that doesn't mean that Obama then is blameless and I say, well, he's just the head of this organization, he's not really guilty. No, he carries an awful lot of guilt. He signs the orders, he has the power to end the wars, to bring the troops home. It's one of the things he doesn't, can't blame the Republican Congress on that, or, you know, the baby boomers, or whatever bullshit. He could do that if he wanted, or at the very least, he could tone it down. You know, when I say tone it down, I mean murder less people. It's kind of disgusting that you even have to use a metaphor like that, but look, think. To see people, I, I saw someone posting, my heart died today. Does your heart die every day that you hear about a drone strike in Pakistan, or Yemen, or Afghanistan? or Iraq, or Syria, or previously in Libya, or Mali. Mali, all you, oh, all these being terrible to African Americans, what, what's going on in Africa? You've not been paying attention. Well, you haven't been paying attention. You've been paying attention to what the news media told you to pay attention to, and for some reason the news media has selected this, and, you know, we could get really conspiratorial about that, and it serves to divide the people, and race war would be good for the Democrats, and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to be a race war. I think part of me thinks there's an incentive thing here that's not necessarily as nefarious. You know, the... I'm sure that they have meetings at the networks where they discuss what gets ratings and what doesn't. And they probably very, very often uh, conclude that things that have a racial element get ratings, and so let's have a racial element. And, um, you know, this kind of stuff stirs up, stirs up a lot of the blacks. And then when the blacks get stirred up, the whites get indignant and they're like, hey, don't be so fucking, 
ridiculous. I mean, there's an, of all the problems in the black community, if we're just going to look at the CDC data and the cause of deaths, the George, George Zimmermans of the world are not a blight on the black community. Uh, in total, you could say in this instance, yeah, maybe he was uh, he did something really bad. Uh, you know, again, grant, assuming that all the evidence is false and that you know uh, that, that he's actually guilty as opposed to what the verdict came out, which is again I'm conceding is possible. But I'm not that there's any evidence. I'm just conceding. I was there. I don't know. Maybe I'd be the last one to say that the verdicts and trials are uniformly correct. Uh, but on this one, I think that there was. Uh, a ratings incentive to trump this up, uh, if not a more nefarious one, but I couldn't say that for sure. But what really pisses me off is just the crocodile tears. This, oh, I'm so sad about this, and yet every fucking day the war goes on and the war goes on, and the man who's responsible for it, he just gets a pass, he gets a pass, he gets an excuse. When you confront, no matter how, I, I've been trying to confront liberals about this for years now, and every time the fucking excuse is Bush and the Republicans, as if, grant, oh yeah, granted, I hate Bush and the Republicans, great, they were terrible. Bush was, Bush killed more people than Obama, he didn't do a lot of things, I mean, explicitly Obama has done things that Bush didn't do, you know, Bush never said that he could kill Americans without trial. He said he could imprison them without trial. Uh, maybe he, and he did kill some on accident. He, he came out and he didn't say, well, I have the right to do that. He said that was a mistake, which of course, that would be, that would be kind of akin to what George Zimmerman is accused of doing. Uh, you know, he saw some, sh uh, some, uh, some suspicious looking Arabs in, 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 at a wedding party and he, and he blew it up and, uh, oh, it turns out one of them was, was just an American. And so that's the problem. I mean, it kind of warps your perspective and say, oh, he accidentally killed an American. Those other people, on the other hand, no biggie. But uh, Obama's come right out and said, yes, I can kill American citizens anytime I want. All I need to do is have a judicial process that I've created, uh, that I have total control over, that there's no transparency. It's completely secret what my criteria is. And anybody who I would claim through that process to be worthy of death, I can murder. I don't need a trial. There doesn't need to be a jury. There doesn't need to be an appeal. There needs to be no process whatsoever. I can do this anytime I want. Thank you very much. Thank you for the Peace Prize. This isn't a secret. This is in the news. It's not in the news as much. And so I can, you know, forgive people who maybe didn't know but I, I feel like it's been pointed out so many times now. You know, the amount of blood that's just spewing out of this administration, even if it's less blood than, say, under FDR or Lincoln or Bush. Uh, it's more blood, though, certainly, though, than under Reagan or under Carter or under Clinton. Or I mean, he's <laughs> that, that argument to me, it just... It, it just... It reeks of somebody who doesn't really care about how many people Obama, they don't really care about people getting murdered. They care about the personality cult and the identity cult, not just of the man, but of the ideals they think that he represents that they identify with. And they will not allow those ideas or that man to be besmirched by reality. And so that blood that drips off of his fingers, that pours out of his mouth whenever he speaks his lies, that's not his fault, that's George W. Bush's fault. And while I can appreciate blaming George W. Bush for a lot, he's a war criminal, and I'd have no less vitriol for that man, to then excuse the crimes of another, because A, assuming that Bush caused them, or just even worse, saying, even if Obama is guilty of these, it's not as bad as Bush, so it's not a crime then, or it's not something to condemn, uh, I find completely ridiculous uh, and revolting in the extreme. And I don't see this is ever going to change anytime soon. Um, if you are an unthinking person or if you are going to have play identity politics, if, you, if how you view the world is going to be based on some hypothetical, imaginary, idealized myth about uh, the, the racial underdog or the big government, beneficent big government that's going to help you and help everybody and protect everybody, and, you know, the boogeymen in your world are the people who resist the hegemony of some central government. So anyone who, who questions the power of, of, of the state to do good as you see it, those are the boogeymen in your world. So 
you know, the people who, who, uh, well, like, like, like Snowden, people like that, or Bradley Manning. There's another trial right there, and it's interesting how willing Obama has been. This is a, this is another thing. This is kind of a crime. This is this is a problem with him particularly that other presidents, as far as I'm aware, except from perhaps Lincoln, have not been bad in this area. Is inter injecting themselves into the judicial process for minor crime. You know, it's one thing if the if the president is himself involved in legal activity, then obviously he needs to or she needs to insert himself into that. That makes sense. Um, and this has happened before with Bradley Manning. You know, Bradley Manning's not, that's not a Supreme Court hearing, that's not a political, that, that's not something that Obama has any say over, and he declares his guilt before the court martial even happens. Um, you know, there was, there was an episode uh, during the Nixon administration where, you know, Nixon asserted something to the effect that so-and-so, um, who was it, uh, who leaked the Pentagon Papers, uh, what's his name? He stole, he stole the Pentagon Papers from the Rand Corporation, and uh, he got put on trial, and at one point, uh, Richard Nixon said, well, he's guilty. And then people call on and say, you can't, you can't say that he's guilty. There hasn't been a trial yet. You know, it's, he's, he's been accused of a crime, and he's going, oh, and he has, I'm sorry, I did not mean that. There's certainly, I certainly did not mean that. I just meant something like, I think he would be guilty if they find all that stuff to be true or something like that. It's, you know, like, bad on me for even suggesting that. But Obama feels perfectly reasonable coming off and condemning Bradley Manning to a guilty verdict. And now... This Trayvon Martin case, you know, the police did not charge him with anything. They believed it was self-defense, and it wasn't until later that there started to be this big stink about it that they decided to recharge him. And the big part where it went into the stratosphere is when Barack Obama just came off and basically said, "I want this. This. This was a murder." He basically got on TV and said, "George Zimmerman is guilty of a crime. He's guilty of homicide." That's what he said. That's the that that is the implicit uh, meaning of his national televised event. So he is coming out to somebody the local authorities think is innocent. Maybe he's not innocent, but he just comes out and says that person is guilty. We're getting to the point where now a president is just going to start, you know, it used to be the opposite. The president could pardon people. You know, he could undo an unjust law. Now it's in the point where he can point a finger and he can get you, if he can't get you executed, which he can too, apparently, by his own say. Uh, he can have you charged with homicide or whatever other crime you know he thinks is thinks uh, fits uh, you know your personality or whatever. So uh, maybe other presidents have been bad at this. I certainly don't know enough about all their records to say for sure. But I've not heard of it, given how taboo it was for them to uh, inject into the legislative or the judicial process. Other than Lincoln, Lincoln just did away with the jud judicial process, but. Um, you know, that's disgusting. Uh, you know, he's probably, I've heard that he's going to not let, and why would he do that? Because it makes his base happy, because his base is stupid. They're morons. Who, they can't see past the fact that he's half black. And so whatever he says is true. Whatever he promises is true. And it doesn't even matter when he condemns other brown people. That's who he kills, other brown people. He's not. That's the other weird thing is it's not like he's a friend of the minorities and an enemy of the white. He didn't. Con he's not drone striking white people. He's not drone striking, uh, or he's he's not putting uh, white people in indefinite detention. He's putting brown people there, and he's de he, and he's condemning George Zimmerman, who is brown, who is fucking Hispanic, and part black apparently. That's who he's killing. Is. It's like people think they've got like this guy in their corner who's gonna fight the fight Whitey. No, he's not. He's not fighting Whitey. He golfs. With, he is Whitey. Like he's worse than Whitey. He fought. He's worse than the most racist caricature KKK clan member in terms of the number of people he kills. You know, look at what happens with the drug war that he continues to wage even more vociferously than Bush did. How many blacks have been chewed up and killed? because of that since he's been president. Thousands? Tens of thousands? Probably. I mean, every year, it's what, 11,000 murders? About 80% of those are black, so we're talking 8,000 a year, eight years, 64,000, 64,000? 
70% of those are going to be uh, from the drug war, so, you know, okay, I'm mean, terrible at math, but uh, what is that? That's probably upwards of 50,000 blacks that are dead because of a war. A war! Like, explicitly what they call it, a war on drugs. Not to mention all the, all the Rottweilers <laughs> who are owned by black people, uh, and most of you are not going to know what I'm referring to there. Uh, he's all for that. George Zimmerman, even if he's as bad as everyone says, he doesn't even hold a candle to that. So, let's uh, not be fucking stupid idiots when it comes to what's going on in the world, people.